Thanks. My next guest received an Academy Award nomination for his screenplay, uh, Divorce American Style. Maybe you saw that. And he's written the last two Elliot Gould pictures, Getting Straight. Well, actually, all movies are Elliot Gould pictures, but he, <laughs> his last two were Getting Straight and I Love My Wife, which is anything but uh, a love story, I'm told. I haven't seen it. We welcome Robert Kaufman. <laughs> I mean, Bob Kaufman. Hi. Have a seat, Robert. This is a short segment. Uh, I hope so, because uh, I want to start and end. I wrote Ski Party, and that's it. You never, wrote Ski Party? Never wrote another picture. I, 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 I was sitting out there, my God. Oh, you don't want to pretend that you want to pretend you're no, not. No, I didn't write anything. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, everyone came out here earlier, and they said they were Jewish. I know I'm Jewish. I felt the pain back there watching the show in the green room. Wow. Do you find the opportunity to meet a critic unsettling? No. No. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm prepared. I mean, I, I, you know, you get good ones, you get bad ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, uh, it's a, in the end, they, uh, the people go to see what they want to see anyway. And the fact about Love Story is, uh, I think a lot of you missed a point, is uh, it's a really, uh, it's a reflection of our uh, economic condition. As we... Uh, it is? Yeah, I think the public is turning away from realism because uh, we're going into a depression and they want escapism and fantasy. And we're going to see escapism, romance, fantasy, Betty Grable and Cesar Romero, 1970s style, for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is good criticism, by the mm -hmm. way. I mean, that, that is very enlightening. That explains a great deal. I think we're, uh, uh, I think when, the, I it think. It does, it really does. I think Sincerely. when the country's affluent, like we've yeah. been affluent, uh, at least we're told we're affluent, uh, we have a great deal of guilt about being affluent because we're mm -hmm. brought, all brought up in the Protestant, you know, the Judeo-Christian ethic, and we want to suffer. So we want to look at ourselves and say, oh my God, we're ugly, terrible, lost, lonely, alienated people. And we had three, four, five years of those pictures. Now I think it's swinging around again. Now everyone has, doesn't have anything, and they're saying, what am I feeling guilty about? My life is terrible. I don't want to see, I don't want to see my life on the screen. I don't want to see reality. And they go and they see Love Story which is an escape, it, escape from the uh, going home at 5 o'clock, and there is Harriet standing in the doorway saying, uh, you know what the children did today? <laughs> I don't want... They don't want to know what the children did today yeah. because they know what the children did already today from the last day and the week before, and we say, let's go fall in love with Ali McGraw, at least for an hour and a half until she dies. <laughs> I mean, at least let's, let's, let's go get out of it all. That's what it is. In fact, the way to have a successful picture this month is to get this into month. a theater within walking distance of Love Story and schedule your film 15 minutes after Love Story opens each performance, the and you get the overflow. The ones that couldn't get in. Thousands we made in Westwood <laughs> last week, and I love my wife. So you're following Eric's movie everywhere you can. Everywhere I can. I mean, I'm flying to Honolulu tonight. There's, there's, there's Somehow no, I believe you. There's no theater, but there's an open field. <laughs> Next to where the pictures play. There's an open field here tonight. We have a message, and we'll be right back. We're all kinds of... Oh, we're all back here enjoying ourselves. Um, Bob Kaufman... Now, you've, you've had the experience of having a film that was quite popular uh, get what you might call bad reviews from the so-called respectable critics, haven't you? I think that happened with the, Getting Straight. From the New York auteurs, yeah. The from, auteurs. Yes, from the... Uh, it's spelled I, with an H. With an H. No, I would like... I'm That's gonna, a cool poem. I have decided that from every film, I, if I'm lucky enough to do more films, I'm going to put under every film written by Robert Kaufman or screenplay by Robert Kaufman and underneath it in parentheses, I am a New York boy brought up on the streets, West End Avenue. I'm from here. I went to Columbia. Yeah. Uh, I have a feeling there's a hostility toward Hollywood. But that's maybe not true. No, I... Uh, yeah, I got, we got some bad reviews on Getting Straight. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with Getting Straight... Uh, the picture opened four days after the Kent State Massacre. And when it was written, uh, right. when I did it, when I started writing it, uh, the attitudes of the uh, students in the picture were very close to the attitudes of the students in 1968. And the picture was written as a warning as to what was going to happen. And it happened. So that it was called an exploitation yes. picture, wasn't it, in a sense, because it came out at that time. In it defense was of the auteur critics, of whom I'm distinctly not one, they love Hollywood. I think that's the whole problem with auteur critics. They Can you explain adore who auteur Hollywood. critics are for people who praise me well, maybe new it's, it's roughly speaking and briefly speaking a theory of criticism that was evolved in Paris by Francois Truffaut and the people who wrote for the prestigious magazine Cahiers du Cinéma. And it consisted of 
discovering that the director was really the one and only great controlling mind behind the picture and that all this respect for screenwriting and acting and other things was unimportant. It's the director who is the picture, who makes the picture, and therefore we must study directors, we must study all their work. We must never judge one of their films without knowing everything that they've ever done because it's all a construct that bears on, well, each part bearing on every other part. You say Bosch to that. Yeah, I do. And the reason they picked Hollywood ostensibly as, as the field in which to do this worshipping was that in Hollywood they felt the production machinery was absolutely geared against the director. And therefore the genius of the director really had something to fight against. And in overcoming this, this mill through which the pictures were run, by being able to put a little Howard Hawks touch into the lower left-hand corner, or a little Raoul Walsh touch into the upper right-hand corner, he was really asserting his great creative uh, talent better than a European director who was free to do anything. Well, would you have uh, made a note, say, of the fact that when Getting Straight came out, it happened to come out at an unfortunate time and allow for that in the review? Do you think a critic ought to make that kind of thing? Well, you see, it depends on whether you're a sociological critic or not. Uh, Mr. Siegel said to Mr. Kaufman, that is good criticism. I think that may be good sociology. I'm not entirely sure. Sociological whether... criticism. There's, as you just said, there's many uh, kinds yeah, of criticism. Yeah, which is not right. the kind of criticism I practice. Right. I firmly believe that the first and last criterion is aesthetics. And I don't think that a piece, a piece of genuine junk like airport, which serves everybody's low needs, will fail in any age, whether it's an age of prosperity or of depression or anything. But airport doesn't serve everybody's low needs. It only serves the greater, you know, the greater mass of the American people's low needs. No, uh, but that's what I mean by everybody. Uh, there are. Uh, 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 50 or 60 percent of the if, if airports uh, satisfies the needs of 50 percent of the audience uh, which goes out twice a year to a motion picture uh, it goes out to see airport it goes out to sound of music or picture like that mm -hmm. but the uh, that group you can never get you'll never get that group to go out and see husbands there's room for everybody all oh, kinds no, of I'm pictures not I mean that I'm just saying that I don't think that it's the kind of times we're living in that's all that important it's whether a picture really meets a kind of wish fulfillment image that I think is basically not very changing and is always in the bosoms of humanity and especially in those bosoms which haven't been trained by the brain to think more perceptively. Is there anything about getting straight that you'd like to ask Mr. Kaufman about as the author of it or that you as the author would like to like Mr. S. Mr. Simon as the critic of it, since I don't suppose you get together that often? No, uh, uh, I don't remember Mr. Simon reviewing it. Oh, maybe Which, you didn't. Well. Getting straight. Did, did you yeah, I did review it in the, in the no new No wonder leader. I don't remember it. <laughs> no, no. The reason is very simple. Very few people read straight? the new leader. Very few uh -huh. people. <laughs> yes, I remember the I remember it. I remember yeah. it. Yes. May I say my word again? Uh, they didn't hear it. Did it help you to get straight, that book? The book? Say, get straight. The movie. The, the, the movie. It's a movie. Yeah. Well, you should see that. No, I saw it. Don't I you saw miss it. it. Wow, you got to get it. I Make saw Make sure it. that you go and see that I because it would do something for you. You need to get straight. Can you stand up under this withering cross-examination? Just barely. We, we have a message, and we'll be right back. So much Bob Kaufman's the most recent addition to our group of uh, friends. You're doing a new film called I Love My Wife. Is this, uh, this is a bad question to ask an author, uh, but um, uh, is it autobiographical? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Kind of, yeah. It's a good answer. Well, it's kind of autobiographical. Of course, I, you know, I didn't tell the whole truth. Yeah. Uh, there's no underground theater in the world would show that picture. Uh, it would be like an Andy Warhol nine-hour special. Uh, really, you've tasted a, life, have you, in all its sordid aspects? I groveled before it. No, yeah. No, well, about marriage, I, I, I think I try to make a picture uh, about the... Uh, I started out to make a picture about the, uh, the childlike American woman. And it ended up a picture about the sexually adolescent American male, because I found, I found out that as I was writing it, that the yeah. childlike American woman is the way she is because the American male is a sexual adolescent. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you're willing to include yourself in that category and say it publicly? Yeah, only when, I, only when it happened to me, it was terribly tragic. And when it's on the screen, it's very funny, so, well, which, which is what comedy is, I guess, something happening. Uh, something happening to somebody else just like it happened to you, only it's much worse happening to them. What age are you in the film? Uh, Elliot playing me is th about 33. Uh -huh. Oh my God, here's where I leave. I'm kind of running out of life with Elliot. 
uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to live some more before I can do another picture with him. W was 33 the most uh, troublesome time of your life for this problem? Um... Uh, the problem started when I was 12 years old under the blankets with a flashlight. Uh, really? And that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, it's been going on for like 25 years. Reading racy books, uh, eh? Well, my mother told me I was gonna go crazy, yeah. and she was right. You uh, went crazy? What, she used to climb in the window and watch. Yeah, I, ah! I uh, did I go crazy? No, but I, uh, uh, it, didn't, it, it didn't do me any good. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, uh, uh, it's a problem uh, we're all faced with, uh, our generation, yeah. not our children's generation, because thank God I think we're the first generation not to pass the sexual madness on to our kids. My kids play with each other, the doors are open, the bathroom, the door, they don't lock, I was, they're just oh, unbelievably yeah. free. I have to make a film of that sometime. A little yeah. disgusting, but very free. Mm. <laughs> so, well, would you say that you're cynical about marriage in this film? Um... Uh, no, I'm cynical about contemporary marriage. I think it has to change. The rules have to change. Yeah. Uh, and I think we have to find a, a new way of going. It's a little anachronistic today. It doesn't seem to work like it used to work about I've never four heard years ago. Cutting off. I've got to say this. I've never heard as many big words as I hear on this show. And, and, and you must remember that. In Georgia, we didn't use these type of words. Well, that's because and, and, and we're Shut really up, Jewish. shut up. <laughs> you know I'm Jewish that. too. Mm. The only big words that we had was like Empire State Building and Atlantic Ocean. Really? Pacific Ocean and stuff like that. And these words, you know, you all be talking all over my head. Seneca, Bacabashi, I be one. I said, what they talking about? And I've been wondering all night what you all were saying. A lot of times I wanted to get in, but I don't know what you were saying. I seem to remember you that you did get that. in a couple I, of times. I didn't know what you was talking about. Uh -huh. You all should use little bitty words like don't and do sometimes. Uh, would you like us all to stand now? Shut up. Or... <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, oh are, are, are you married now? Are, are you, Bob? I don't no, know. No, I'm divorced. Oh, you're divorced. <laughs> are, are, are you, I, I it had nothing to do with the picture. I had to do with no, the first picture. No, of course not. I, I don't know why I'm probing into your life No, like no, no. I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm divorced. Oh, mm -hmm. boy. <laughs> yeah, I got a California divorce. California. Is that as good as the other kinds? Or what does that mean, a California? Uh, the alimony stops the day I get hit by a stagecoach in Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances of getting hit by one in Bulgaria? You've been there, I know. Well, I happen to be a Yugoslav. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. You've never been hit by anything there, I assume. Uh, you went to high school with uh, Frank Perry, the filmmaker. Yes. Was that a, a little school for little filmmakers, or did you? No, that was, uh, just... that was Staples High School in Westport, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And Frank and I went. He was one of the few friends I had since we were the first Jewish family in town in 1941. Were you? Yeah, and they were terrific to us. No anti-Semitism. In Westport? Until the second Jewish family showed up. <laughs> then they got a little worried. But no, Frank and I went to high school together, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, he taught me how to cheat. Uh, and yeah. I, I taught, uh, he taught me how to cheat uh, looking uh, back over your shoulder with a mirror in your hand, and I taught him how to cheat taking your shoes and socks off and turning the pages of ancient history with your bare toes. Your uh, well, it's certainly Frank a lesson to kids in how to get ahead in, mo in the movies. Frank was, uh, Frank, yeah, well, that's about the only distinction the high school has. Yeah. You cheated with taking, I don't know. Yeah, you, you can, turn the you pages can take of... your shoes and socks off and turn pages with your toes. But what, isn't it, isn't Watch that in English 101 when you oh, teach it. Oh, it's a drill, wow. <laughs> no, but I mean, aren't they, aren't they gonna see that a book is down there? No, not if you wash your feet off. Uh, yeah, so no, they can't see your books down there. Usually they're standing in the back and most professors or teachers are so, you know, preoccupied with their own fantasies. They're, they're, uh. just watch, they're, they're just watching hands. They never watch feet. I wouldn't try this method, but if you say so, we have a local message and then we'll be back.